Okay, it's time to integrate operation orchestration and OBM. So we'll go to operation orchestration window over here. Click on advanced, proceed. And in the meanwhile, we will open the configuration for operation orchestration integration. And we will modify a little bit of a security over here. So SSO. We'll enable it and we'll set up the init string to what we want it to be. Click on save. Fantastic. Now internal users. Let's see what we have. Security set. Enable authentication. Username admin. Password. What we want it to be. We can save it and verify the username and the password to provide administrator credentials. Okay, so we need to create a role, I guess. So we have the administrator. Do we have users? Use chaos. Okay, there we go. So we're going to be create a user, username admin. We'll specify the password. And administrator would be able to do anything. There we go. So there's our internal administrator. Enable authentication. And we're going to say this is the password. Accepted. Cool. Go for it. Great. So now we have the LWSSO and we have the uh, security settings that actually in, uh, allow, allow OBM to go into OOM authenticate from time to time. So now next step is to go to OBM and configure its integration settings. So we'll go to administration, we go to infrastructure settings. Under foundations, we will select uh, integrations with other applications. Okay, and operation orchestration should have its own setting over here. Always use operation orchestration integrated user. Normally the username is only using to the integration is always used. Okay, cool, fantastic. So we do have LWSSO, but uh, okay, yeah. Operation orchestration application URL, OO server version, yes. So we need to go and copy this into the configuration over here. There's our value. We need to resize, resize this window a little bit. Okay, and we click on save. Fantastic. So that is our OO. Okay, integration username. And you know what? Just in case, just in case, going to be the admin over here. All right. Now we need to do a little bit of a uh, necessary but uh, troublesome procedure of importing the certificates from OO into OBM and vice versa. So it's pretty simple to do if you know what you're doing. And here in my documents, I have all of my certificates gathered in the same location. So on OO, I just go to disk C. Okay, it's much faster if I do it like this. Okay, fantastic. And then I'll go to program files, microfocus, operation orchestration. Central, then it's going to be Java, Java, Java. And here we will have our key 
store file. Now we need to go to IDM. I think it's Windows Setup JRE X64 JRE bin. And here we should have the key tool. So we go and we open the command prompt. We CD over there. And let's see if we have the key tool. Yes, we do. So we follow the same procedure as always minus trust, minus uh, trust CA search, uh, minus alias. OBM, not OBM, OBM, minus file, and then we specify C, uh, certificates, slash from OBM, come on, from OBM, there we go, server CRT, minus key store, and here it gets a little bit tricky. We need to go to the key store. Okay. And paste it here. Slash key dot store. Okay. Quite a login command, but uh, illegal. Oh, okay. Okay. It's uh, the wrong command. So we go to home over here and it's not trust, it's import. There's too many commands in one day. Import, been doing integrations for the whole day. And uh, import cert, illegal options files, microfocus. Okay. So this is where we need to. Uh, to do the okay, and then we will need to put some brackets over here. Probably, would it work? Yes, okay, and we say yes. Now, that's the operations uh, orchestration, but in OBM, we need to follow practically the same procedure. And I already have the certificate extracted from OO, and I need to do just exactly the same thing. So I'll go and find my key tool and import the certificate, just finding the same command and importing the operation orchestration certificate over here. Pretty simple, going for it. Let's see if I made another typo. No, I didn't. Here's the password, we say yes. And like always, we need to restart. Okay, where is it? Okay, uh, control, uh, restart. Run HVBSM restart in order for it to take place. So we're doing just that. And we'll skip to the part where the restart is over. Now, the important question is, why did we import uh, the OBM certificate into OO? Because it's going to be an uh, OBM that contacts OO and invokes those run books. And I'm just doing it out of, uh, it's, it's automatic for me. I'm just doing mutual certificate exchange just in case. It might have solved some problems for me that I would uh, see from time to time but in this specific situation and didn't do, it didn't do much but still kind of okay because uh, it's just an extra step and it's actually pretty fast when you're doing it without narrating so we're good over here okay and obm is up again we are going to users groups and roles and what do we have here this is the users Located any groups yet? Okay, so I have a single user that is admin, and we are going. I'm going to my operator, super operator, and uh, we don't need to modify anything over here because we are using only an admin. But if you would have different user roles over here, different users in general, you would need to go and allow them to do runbook execution, runbook mappings, and uh, 
all, all, all of those uh, uh, administrative tasks and roles need to be approved for users to use, but administrator has access to all of it. So we are going to test it out. Let's see if we are missing a step. Map run books, yes. So we're going to administration over here and we are going to run book mappings. And if everything works correctly, we would be able to uh, create new configuration. Okay, let's see if it connects to the existing, uh, yeah, okay. Business transaction flow, just select a random CI. And we are able to connect to the library of the, uh, of OO. Now we don't have any flows just yet because this is a fresh new OO which doesn't have anything on it, but we are able to connect. So the integration works, everything is fine with us, and we are good. Of course, in next video, we will do a basic workflow deployment, not development, we already covered that one in the previous videos, but we'll just deploy one of the run box, so we would be able to use it in a demo flow, but the integration here is complete.